Yo, what is good, my anime people? What is good, yo? <laughs> All right, Borinto. Uh, I don't really understand one part of it, but most of it was pretty decent. Um, some things that needed to happen kind of happened for me. Um, for the sense of like a payoff or why they introduce certain things. But um, one of those things being the the snake. We finally get to see the snake and seeing how he actually waited until like, you know, the perfect moment to actually make his move and actually help and stuff like that is when um, Mitsuki actually seemingly was back on Borinto's team and he seemingly had proved that everything he said was true. So with that being said, it kind of like played out perfectly in the sense of them making the bet and they didn't just continuously use him on points where uh, it didn't seem like the bet would go in Borunto's favor. Uh, instead, you know, they brought him out of decent parts of the time. So I do appreciate that. Um, the other thing being uh, just Mitsuki and this guy that, you know, really had the closest friendship out of all of the people that we see Mitsuki kind of encounter throughout this arc that kind of had me uh like I don't know I, I just felt like they wanted to have the feels for that character and it just was like yeah it was kind of obvious that he was going to go because are they were they really going to let these guys sacrifice a whole bunch of humans and take their hearts and let them live and then act like you know how do you go past that you know like taking human life to bring about the lives of synthetic synthetic humans so that was kind of already a hit or miss like uh for me when it came down to feeling for that guy and including since the only way he could really try to push mitsuki to a breaking point was to then threaten something that Mitsuki loves or that Mitsuki holds dear just to get him to fight, you know? So I thought that was kind of like, like, bruh, come on, man. Come on, bruh. Um, but overall, I think, you know, it had to be done. Um, we're definitely getting to the final um, part of this, so I'm kind of happy this is coming to an end and, like, pretty much either like next week or one more episode with them like talking about the end game conclusion of it all after the fight um because it looks like Bordento and Mitsuki and them might not even take care of him outside at first because it seems like uh Ku is somewhere else uh during the previews like he's kind of comes out victorious in this little mini bout or like dips out or something along those lines so interested to see what um comes about for his character because right now he's straight up like the hidden stone village madara right now i swear his outfit like shirtless having some weird implanted thing on his chest i mean it's it's pretty much madara uh of the clones <laughs> like I don't, I don't know how much more you you need to see of how like his clothes are designed how his hair is designed now um seemingly it didn't seem that long at first until you remove all the clothes the top part and you can see just how long that thing be hang the hair is hanging boy pause um but yeah i was i was kind of thrown off by that uh that little tidbit of the previews him him getting the heart and taking it out on the doctor wasn't really surprising to me because he had been going, he had been spiraling downhill quite quickly. So for me, it was pretty obvious that he would probably take the life of whoever he had to because of, you know, just in, just because such a vacation has rise, he needs to take care of himself first and he's the one that's supposedly going to be the guardian of the world which is kind of their mouth their uh their drive their passion that they're going with so that that was kind of like the sad part of it all is how much they were had on their shoulders compared to how much they could actually do as the bodies they were without killing the same people they were supposed to protect 
uh, pretty messed up like overall story for them uh, in general. I didn't expect it to um, end the way it is. Like just them straight up getting bodied. I mean, we got uh, uh, <clears throat> Sarada literally watching people like get hit by boulders. You know, like but uh, the Naruto universe is definitely not as forgiving as like so to speak like my hero academy or freaking even black clover stuff like that because they straight up just watch this girl get bodied uh they first break her puppet and then after breaking it she's sit straight up still sitting there watching her and jumps far away from her and lets the boulders just straight up fall and crush her to death so yeah the the bordento universe definitely is gonna uh, or like not the universe but like the, all of this different stuff i really hope that it helps the audience see more of like the humanity and stuff i guess that they're kind of going for because i mean seeing someone get crushed would be crazy but to Sarada is like oh this made person this person who's a clone who's not even a real human getting crushed seemingly didn't really have that much of an effect on her nearly as much as maybe someone from the hidden leaf getting crushed so that's kind of crazy um not to mention Mitsuki kind of we kind of knew he was already on one we knew Mitsuki was about that life to take life and continue pushing on like nothing's happened but I to see him actually feel something for someone else other than Bordento I think was probably some of the better development for a character who has been told to do something and follows and then doesn't understand why they were doing it um to then for them to show themselves like caring for someone else the same way or not as much but you know you would you would do things that would jeopardize your own life to help somebody it goes to show you he Mitsuki had a will uh maybe even more powerful than Sadas <laughs> like Jesus um so we'll, we'll get to see i mean i guess these deaths like dying by these certain things are like a mercy killing because they were either gonna die like that or they're gonna die slow by uh by their own like body deteriorating so or just like the guy who meets he was chilling with he straight up died with his arm straight up getting disintegrated so that's just how that goes um i guess a boulder falling on you wouldn't be so far from that uh but yeah we kind of get the full con conclusion of all the clones now we're moving on to the final one and we still got the old man which i think he might actually i might i think he actually might die in this like he kind of seems like they really wanted to do him one last little story like he was a really cool character back in Shaputin, but now with him being like senile and causing all this ruckus and stuff it only seems right that he's going to try to come to like battle with crew and get absolutely bodied or like at least get slapped down or something again like he already did and probably die from just having too much uh stress on his body and stuff like extra stress that he already his body's old and fragile now, and he's over here trying to fight. He's already used his powers, um, his jutsu, and he's already been, like, bopped by uh, his creation. So, he's not looking so good. Um, I can't wait to see, like, the conclusion of this to actually see where we're going to go after all of this. Because, yeah, if you haven't told by my other reviews or you haven't seen them, I've been kind of bored with this uh, arc, but I definitely stuck in there because I enjoy Mitsuki's character. Not to mention that we haven't been confirmed to know what the guy with the fish hook actually did to Mitsuki. Did he steal his sage? Did he just take enough of his chakra from him while he was in sage and that made it so he couldn't use it anymore? What happened with all that? That throw was sick. Um, but overall i really don't know what meets his characters got going on so i think that's why it was fun to see him get an arc that was supposed to be dedicated to him but kind of turned into an arc for everybody type of deal so that kind of sucked but overall i still enjoyed 
knowing that he got his development and I'm guessing there's going to be another arc probably for Sadada uh, similar like this or something where she makes her own decisions and maybe it doesn't seem like a smart one at first but it turns out that it's the only one she could make or something along those lines not sure just guessing by how this one ended and um, really didn't seemingly add that much more to the story it's not like I mean, unless the Hidden Stone Village starts to hate the Leaf or something for maybe being the one to seemingly take out the Grandpa or something. I don't know, man. There's there's a lot that could happen, but I feel like won't happen. I feel like this was definitely just that placeholder until we got to the better stuff. So, overall, let me know what you guys are thinking about all this because, to be fair, um, Bodento and the Snake is pretty cool uh not to mention he did say that maybe he should like fight alongside with the you know someone else who's human so it looks like Borinto might be keeping the snake which actually kind of makes a lot of sense in the fact that it would also benefit him and Mitsuki's relationship because they might be able to work together on snake sage mode at the same time, like, I'm pretty sure Mitsuki doesn't just go around and train or have any time to really train when he's trying to be a full-time Hidden Leaf nil, uh, Ninja. And because of that, I honestly believe that it would be cool if Borinto was working towards that power and they both kind of, like, had a competition between each other to see who can be the strongest with it, with Borinto having... A very strong summoning jutsu compared to Mitsuki's sage mode, which in hindsight won't really help Bodento at all. But uh, yeah, we could at least see some type of rivalry even in that case. But we'll see what happens overall. This It could be easily waved away. This whole entire uh, Bodento having a snake uh, summon could be completely wiped away with one like easy couple of lines like... Thanks for the help, and I'm glad I could show you humans aren't bad. Now go back to where you came from. <laughs> you know, like you know, they could do whatever they want really with that character and keep him. And you see how long he he went like two episodes without saying anything at all, and he's been watching this whole time like almost like Karama, you know. So they can go uh, a bit without having him doing anything, which is pretty cool. And it's also just that much more of a reasoning why uh, Bordento can be uh, capable of fighting much more fights because if if I remember correctly it seems like Kurama could bring um, uh, he could bring Naruto out of a Genjutsu I'm not sure if it's stated if uh, like the the summoning Jutsus that they have are connected in such a way that they could also help in that way I don't think that is the case but if it was that would be very helpful which actually no it, it clearly isn't because I think the snake guy maybe would have helped because that was around no I guess Mitsuki didn't help back then so yeah that's what I mean like it either fits that the snake didn't help because Mitsuki was still like on the fence of not being on his side and then when he was if he got in that genjutsu do you think he would have helped or could he help at that time um, because I mean he was close to taking out his own friend and he's helped in uh, less worse situations than that one, so maybe he just wasn't, and he couldn't, uh, Bodento couldn't even hear him in the first place, so that could be a thing, uh, I'm not sure, but yeah, let me know what you guys are feeling on overall Bodento, uh, I kind of know the, ex the resounding, uh, amount of people, but if there's anyone on my channel that's actually watching the show from start to finish, like how I've been, and I've been trying to, like, review it this whole time, let me know, uh, how you guys feel about it, or, if you're reading the manga, if you enjoy it that much more, um, but at the same time, after this arc, supposedly we're getting into that manga stuff, so that could be uh, the saving grace for some of the fandom to be happy that they stuck it in, but overall, man, let's just hope that Borinto is an amazing series that lives up to the hype of Naruto. So, with that, everybody... Let's hope that they bring in Itachi sooner or later because he's dipping out. Look, he just left. He's like, I'm not even in Borinto. I'm out. I'm out. So we got we to gotta find out a way for him to get back in the story, like a Sasuke flashback or something, please. Um, 
that character is always fun to see and it's always good to see the audience like just go crazy for one character <clears throat> but yeah everybody Sorry this video is late. Um, I went out and got to watch the football game. Uh, Saints lose it by a freaking field goal. That really sucks. Uh, sorry to all the Saints fans out there. And to the Rams, good luck in your next game. But yeah, everybody. With that, I will talk to you in the next one. And yeah, I hope you had a good day, night. Evening, whenever you're watching this, I am the Anime G, and I will talk to you in the next video. Peace.